Welcome to the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Bethel Assembly, located in Oshawa, Canada. Our mandate is to spread the good news and to influence our surrounding communities. We hope your time in this place of worship, love, communion, service, and community will be a glorious and life-transforming experience. This is a place for your entire family, a place for you and me. The Lord bless you, church. You can have your seats. Thank you, choir. Please tell your neighbor and say, neighbor, welcome to the presence of the Lord. This morning, the Lord will meet you at a point of your need and will turn every of your story to glory in the name of Jesus. I'd like to welcome everyone to our first service today. This is the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Bethel Assembly, a place of love and transformation. And let me put it this way. If there is anyone who has ever stepped into this assembly by the authority of the scripture, your life will be transformed. Your life must be transformed and you will never remain the same. And so this morning, I would like us to continue in what we start to talk about from the beginning of this month, talking about the hand of the Lord. But we want to look at it from another dimension. Amen. Now, if you remember, one of the things I said the hand of the Lord can do is that when the hand of the Lord comes upon a life, praise God, the hand of the Lord always brings the word of the Lord. Amen. The hand of the Lord always what? Brings the word of the Lord. And so when the word of the Lord comes, prophecy. And so I would like to focus on that this morning. Prophecy by the hand of the Lord. Please write it down. Prophecy by what? Man can speak. Man can utter a word. But if it is not by the hand of the Lord, there will be no manifestation. There will be no results. Prophecy by the hand of the Lord. Let's read that uh, Ezekiel again, 37. Let's read from verse 1. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1. We'll read to verse 5. The hand of the Lord, please church, I would like you to pay attention. The hand of the Lord was upon me and did what? And carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. Amen. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, Do what? Prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the. Verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, not your word. He said prophesy, but you are prophesying what the Lord said. Thus saith the Lord unto these bones, behold, I will cause bread to enter into you, and ye shall live. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in the name of Jesus. At the beginning of this month, I believe the first Sunday, I told us that the hand of God... The hand of God is a hand that is eternal. Is a hand that is everlasting. Is a hand that spreads throughout the face of the earth. And when the Bible talks about the hand of the Lord, I describe to us that the hand of the Lord is what brings about the presence and the power of God. Are we together? The hand of the Lord is what brings about the presence, the power, and the glory of God. is Shekinah glory. The hand of the Lord is also 
the hand that brings about the manifestation of the spirit and of the power of God in action. The hand of the Lord is what brings about the manifestation. You know the hand of God can be present in a place and nothing will happen. I pray for someone today that the hand of the Lord will rest upon your life and brings about results in the name of Jesus. And so we talk about the life of a man called David. And I remember telling us that the hand of God, when that hand is upon, is chosen. When you are chosen, uh, in the book of Psalm 89, verse 3 and verse 4. Psalm 89, verse 3 and verse 4. The scripture says, I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy throne to all generations. God is still looking for chosen. And I did remember telling us that though many are called, were you part of the many or you are part of the chosen? It says many are called, but how many are chosen? And so it is only those who are ready to press in that will become part of the few that will be chosen. Praise God. But this morning, I would like to focus on the word prophecy by the hand of the Lord. The speakings of the Spirit of God always come with results. But then, why are we as believers, as Christians, why are we not seeing the hand of God in every of our speakings? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Beloved, let me say this. The hand of God, I said, is always upon the life of the chosen. Because there is a purpose that God created each and every one of us for. And so, if you don't understand your purpose in life, you are still going to be running up and down, trying to fulfill what you think is your purpose or your mandate in life. But when God opened your eyes to see that I am called by God and there is more for me to fulfill in life, then just like Ezekiel said, you allow the hand of the Lord to come upon your life. The hand of the Lord also said this. God does not waste his resources. It is only men who are yielded. Men who are malleable, men who are ready to accept that God wants to use me. And when we talk about destiny in life, I'm still trying to build up something here. I remember I've told us that not every one of us will be preachers. Not every one of us will be choir member. But God has called every one of us and has given you a mandate in life. And that is your own profession. Some are engineers. Some are teachers. Some are doctors. Some are nurses. When you become spiritual in your own profession, you are fulfilling the purposes of God. Are we together? That means you don't have to begin to tell me and say, Pastor, it is only those who are in the pulpit ministry that needs the hand of God. That means each and every one of us in life, the hand of God must be upon your life. Otherwise, you can never prosper even in your own chosen profession. Are we together, church? The hand of God is still strong. It's still mighty. It's still powerful. But going back to our text, Ezekiel 37 from verse 1. The Bible says to Ezekiel now, the hand of the Lord ha, came upon him. And that hand, he says, the hand carried me out. In the what? In the spirit, the hand of the Lord was upon me. That hand carried me out in the spirit and set me down in the midst of a very troublesome scenario. In the midst of a valley that was full of bones. Amen. 
Next verse. What the hand of the Lord showed Ezekiel is the state of the people of God, the nation of Israel. He caused me to pass by around them, and there were so many of them. The Bible says they were in the open valley. No, they were very dry. The situation was hopeless. The circumstances and the state of the children of Israel was nothing to talk about. Amen. Next verse. They were very dry. And he said, who is speaking here? The Lord said to Ezekiel, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. And look at the next verse. Again, he said unto me, the answer is not with me. The answer is with you. He said unto me, prophesy upon. I prophesy into the life of someone. Whatever represents dryness. Whatever represents dryness. Hopelessness. In the name of Jesus. Let them live now. Amen. Let them live now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Prophecy. Let me try and explain the difference between. You see, when you prophesy, you are speaking. How many of us daily know that every time you speak, to your destiny. You are doing what? You are prophesying. Every time you speak, everything that you speak, you are giving them life. Whether it is good or unfortunately. Everything that you utter, you are giving them life. Praise God. Do you know why? Because every word that comes from our mouth can either make us or otherwise. And that's why you have to be careful with your speaking. Let me put it this way. You see, Ezekiel had a unique encounter here with the Lord. A very unique encounter. And he was trying to understand why is this encounter what am I supposed to do? And the Lord told him that you are having this encounter not because God cannot do it, but God has put each and every one of us here as his representative to do what? To do the speaking. And I know as a church, there is the place of the prophetics. That's not what we're talking about here. What we are talking about is your own speakings on a daily basis. Your own utterance. Your own declaration. When it is by the hand of the Lord, it will command results. Are we together, church? Praise the Lord. Let me try to also put it this way. When your declaration, your speakings, your prophecies... When they are inspired by the Spirit of the Lord, there will be results. The Bible says in Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. It says, The Spirit, Joel 2 28. It shall come to pass afterward that I will do what? I will pour out my Spirit. What happened first? The Lord says, I will pour out my spirit upon. When the spirit is not released, then there shall be no what? You can prophesy. Nothing will happen. Are, are, we, are we getting the picture here? Let's go back to Genesis. From the very beginning. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the. Verse 2. The earth was without form and void. 
darkness was upon the face of the deep. But what happened here? The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the... The Spirit of God was present. Was present. But did not do anything. Look at the next verse. And God said, verse 3, until God spoke, the Spirit was present, but did not do anything. Beloved, I know you are born again. I know you have accepted Jesus into your life. I know that the word of the Lord is in you, is with you. But every time you keep quiet, situation and circumstances, our land, our nation, the nations of the world, what we are seeing today is as a result of our complacency because the church kept quiet. Oh, yes. When the church kept quiet, what happened to Stephen? Stephen was killed. Amen. But when they lay hold on Peter, what happened to the church? Prayers was made unto God by the church for Peter. The church refused to keep quiet. Now, why would you and I, when it has to do with the destiny, not just of yourself, but nations that is in you, why will you keep quiet? Prophecy by the hand of the Lord. And so, God said, by the time God said, let there be light, what happened to the Spirit? The Spirit began to move and did what? And bring about the manifestation of the speakings of God. Church, are we together? Remember I said, your word has power. The power of life and death is where? It's in the tongue. Every of your speaking from today know fully well that they are alive. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. First John. Chapter 4. And verse 17. The Bible says here, as he is, who is your father? The owner of heaven and earth. The one who says, let there be light and there was light. As he is, so are you and I. Where? In this world. What God saw that he was not satisfied with, what did he do? A professor. I don't know what you are seeing around you. And you are not doing anything about it. Ah, we're going to pray. But before we pray, let me briefly give us two or three steps. You see, the funny thing is this. When the Lord asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? Ezekiel says, I don't know. Only thou knowest. And the Lord told him, you go ahead and do what? And prophesy. So why are we not getting results? Why are we not seeing the result of our speakings? But do you know God is always present with you? God is always there with you. And the Bible says his word is forever set to where? In heaven. And we know that God cannot lie. We know that his word will not come back to him void. But that word will accomplish that which God has spoken. And it will fulfill that which God has ordained it to accomplish. And so why are the speakings, the declaration, the words of believers, why don't they command results? prophecy by the hand of the Lord. If the hand of the Lord is not upon the life of a man, the devil does not listen to your grammar. Oh yes, he came to meet Jesus and says, if you are really and truly the son of God, command that these stones become what? Bread. 
because he knew Jesus was hungry. What did Jesus respond? It is rich. He says, really? Let's try another angle. He took him to the pinnacle. Look at all the glory. There's no one here. Nobody will see you. All I need you to do is just to bow down. And the Lord Jesus told him again, it is written. It is. What is written is greater than what you feel. It's greater than your situation and circumstances because what is written will always come to pass. But only come to pass when you speak it. By the Spirit of the Lord. Not when you speak it out of emotions. Not when you speak it out of feelings. There are some of us, what drives us into the place of prayer to go and pray? It's just situation and circumstances around us and you are just having that feeling. But I want you to understand that you want to command results. You must be led. The hand of the Lord was upon Ezekiel. It shall come to pass in that day that I will pour out my spirit upon how many? Not only pastors. When the spirit is poured, that is when you will begin to prophesy and your word, your speakings will command results. But why are we not seeing results in our days? Number one, because we are not walking in the spirit. God is a spirit, correct? Amen. I said God is a spirit. John 4, 24. God is a spirit. And they that must worship him. Amen. Must do so. In what? If God is a spirit, do you know that you're a spiritual being? Oh, yes, believers. Believe me. You are a spiritual being. And I told someone yesterday, uh, I believe, yes, it was during the battle hour. I said this. The things that happen in this world that we see is called forth from the realm of the spiritual. You want to create and recreate your world, you must walk in the spirit. Why are believers' words, why are, are prophecies not carrying weight? Heaven is not responding. It's because we are not walking in the spirit. Galatians. Uh, 5. Thank you, Lord. Likabo shabrenda linea katushka liya brasku pali nemo shabrenda linea duska palia. I speak into the destiny of someone. Whatever situation that has caused your life to become dry, your destiny to become dry, let them receive life now Amen. by the hand of the Lord. Amen. Let them receive life now, Amen. life now, Amen. life now Amen. by the hand of the Lord Amen. in the name of Jesus. In that Galatians 5, 16, it says, This I say then, walk. In what? You cannot live in the spirit and not walk in the spirit. And so if you don't walk in the spirit, the spirit will not be able to have a saying in your life. The spirit will not be able to have a full expression in your life. Believers are very smart. We want God to attend to our needs. But yet, we don't want to walk with the Spirit. Remember, in that Psalm 50 verse 5, it says, gather together. Only those who have made the covenant with me by sacrifice. I'm saying this and we are repeating and repeating because at the end of this year, I don't want you to begin to tell stories of what man could or should have happened. Because God is still the same yesterday, today, and, and his word is already in your mouth. But you need to get it right. There are principles. Principles. Principles that we must follow. 
you must walk in the spirit. If you are not walking in the spirit, your words will not mean anything. You see, that's why you see the devil camping around the lives and homes of believers. Because our words does not matter anymore. Because we are not walking in the spirit. Go down to verse 25. Verse 25. If we say, in that Galatians 5, if we say we are spiritual, then we need to live. If we live in the spirit, let us also do what? Walk. If you don't walk the talk, your word will not mean anything. Amen. In the book of Isaiah chapter 61 from verse 1. <laughs> Isaiah 61 from verse 1. said the spirit of the Lord is upon the spirit of the Lord came first. In the beginning the spirit of the Lord moved and God now said here again the spirit of the Lord it says is upon me because it is the spirit that brings the anointing and so I have been anointed to do what? Preach good tidings to the mean. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, opening our prison to those that are bound. Look at verse 2. Opening our prison to those that are bound, to proclaim, to declare, to speak it, that for as many, as many who are in this year, it is your acceptable year. Oh, you don't understand. I said this year, it is your acceptable year. To proclaim, to declare. If you go to 2 Kings chapter 3, 2 Kings chapter 3 from verse 15. 2 Kings chapter 3 and from verse 15. The man of God asks them, says, bring me a minstrel. I'm sure we know what a minstrel means. Says, let the choir come up. And it came to pass when the minstrel played, the hand of the Lord came upon him. The question is this, why would he not begin to prophesy as the king demanded? Tell us what is going to happen. He says, no, it does not work like that. There are protocols. To bring about the manifestation of the hand of God. Verse 16. As the minstrel played, the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, who said it? Thus saith the Lord. But who released the word? Ah. Every time you speak. Beloved, it is the speakings of God through your mouth. Thus saith the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. There are times in which God will speak, will say certain things, and you yourself, you will begin to wonder, how can this thing be? Brethren, it is not your word. It is whose word? You want your speakings, your declaration to receive answer. Let the hand of the Lord always be upon you. And how can the hand of the Lord be upon you? When you walk in the spirit, oh yes, the spirit of God knows the mind of God. And we always bring the mind of God to you for every situation and circumstances. Praise God. Let me say this again. In John 6.33, John 6.33, I talk about it, the word of the Lord is life. And so, you see, every time 63, 663. Every time you release life to a situation, you see, it is the spirit that quickens. 
uh, give it to us in NIV Amplifier. It is the spirit that quickens. The spirit gives life. But is this the spirit that will speak the life? Hello, church. It is you. And so if you don't have that understanding, that's why most of us always face situation and circumstances and the first thing is for you to begin to look for somebody else it says the word that who speaks that you speaks they are spirit and they are life the words that he has given you they have spoken to you they are full of spirit and life you see an anomaly in your body you speak life you see something that is not working in your career, in your finances, in your business. What should you do? Release life. But if we're not working in the spirits, that's why our speakings are not commanding results. Amen. Let's move on. Number two. Number one, I said, why are we not getting results? Because we are not working in the spirits. Number two. Because we are also not prophesying according to the will of God. You see, there is the will of God for every situation. There is the will of God for every life, every home, every family, every household, every nation. If you go back to our text in that Ezekiel 37, the Bible says, Ezekiel said uh, in verse 7 now, Verse 7 of that Ezekiel 37. So I prophesy as what? Hello, church. How did he prophesy? Most of us will prophesy based on what we want, not what we are told to prophesy. Do you know that when you know you carry something, and you know your speakings are correct, you will first of all want to say to yourself, but the Lord is saying, no, it does not work like that. Jesus, the Logos of God, came to this world. And even the disciples wanted to help him when he was about to be arrested. And he told them, he says, no, I can ask my father and he will give me a legion to come and defend me. He says, this one, don't worry. It is not my will. It is his will. It is his will that I go through this process so that you all, each and every one of us, can become sons of God. He prophesied as he was commanded. You want your speakings to receive answer let it always be according to the will of God most of us have a prayer list what we want God to do you see when uh, I believe it's in the book of Matthew chapter 6 uh, from verse 6 our Lord's prayer amen it's interesting when you see how the prayer started a father who art in heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom. Everything has to do with his kingdom. But our own prayer, everything has to do with me, us, and myself. No, we have put the cat before the us. And we want the God of heaven to change his protocol. No. No, beloved. Amen. After this man I pray, a father which art in heaven... Lord be thy name thy kingdom come thy will thy will be done where no not on earth in earth in your life you are the first act if the will of God is not done in your life it will not be done on earth are we together church if you are not if your speaking is not according to the will of God now you see the litmus test. Yes, I know you have been speaking and you have been praying, but is it according to the will of the Father? Amen. 
Let me give us one more, and then we're going to pray. Number one, I said we are not receiving results because we're not walking in the Spirit. Number two, our declaration, our prophesying is not according to the will of God. Number three, it's because of unbelief. Lack of faith will kill any kind of declaration by the Spirit of God. There's a story in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 7, from verse 1. Let's read that very quickly, 1 and 2. Elisha, now, beloved, hear this. Elisha said, who was he speaking to? The nation of Israel. So, he was not just speaking to himself, he was speaking to a whole nation. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Verse 2. And there was a Lord who, and the king leaned on, he answered the man of God. Wrong answer to the wrong person. Behold, if the Lord will make a window in heaven, might this thing be? But what did Elisha told him? Thou shalt see it with your eyes, but you are not going to eat of it. Unbelief. Beloved, there are still people that are carriers of the hand of God, the anointing upon and their speakings, you don't mess with it. Amen. Do you know what happened to that man? If you go down to verse uh, 16, it happened. God used four, uh, is it three or four lepers now? Four lepers. They went to the camp of the enemy and God amplified their footsteps. The enemy thought, yes, the king of Israel has hired an army against us. They ran away. Oh, God can use anything and anyone. And at the end of the day, according to the word of the Lord, there was abundance. The Bible said the people went out, spoiled the tent of the Syrians, and so a, she- a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel. And two valleys for a shekel, according to whose word? Beloved, it is not your word. It is always the word of the Lord. Every time you pray according to the scripture, it is not your word. It is whose word? Next verse. But the man that demonstrated unbelief to the highest order, praise God. He was the same person that was appointed. And the Bible said the people trampled on him and he died. Please rise up. Let me round up by saying, I'll finish this during the second service. We have to stop now. Let me say to someone. Every situation in your life, they have ears. They can hear. But why are you quiet? Please, I would like you to pray. Now, with the understanding that your word is life, I want you to begin to look at your life. What are the things that you want to begin to declare life? You want to pronounce life? Is there anything that is dead in your body, in your health, in your business, in the life of your children? Begin to speak life. I profess our life. Ezekiel said, Only thou knowest, and the Lord asked him, Prophesy. The Bible says he prophesied. Bones located themselves. Flesh came upon them. Sinews. But there was no breath. And they prophesied again. Life. The power of the tongue is the power of life.
Speak life to your situation. Are you tired of life? Are you tired of situation and circumstances perfecting you about? Begin to speak life. I am created in the image and likeness of God. My life cannot continue like this. I decree life. Every dry bowl, whatever symbolizes dryness in your life, speak the life of Christ. Begin to give them life. In Jesus' name, we are praying. While all eyes are still closed, I said your speakings will not matter if you are not walking in the Spirit. And so do we have anyone here who wants to say, Lord Jesus, I want to become a child of God. I want to give my life to Jesus. I would like to pray with you before I pray for others. While all eyes are closed, please raise up your hand. Is there anyone here who wants to say, Lord Jesus, I want to belong to the family of God. Come into my life. Do we have anyone here? Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you, Lord, for every of your children gathered here and as many joining us virtually. Lord, I pray, let your hand be upon them. Let your hand come upon them. Come upon their home. Come upon their life. Come upon their destiny. By your hand, every form of dryness, every form of deadness, every form of wilderness experience, let them receive life. Let them receive life. I prophesy by the Spirit of the Lord that from today, the hand of the Lord will come upon your life and bring about a turnaround for someone's health. I speak by the spirit of the Lord. Let there be healing in your body. Let there be healing. Every form of organ in your body that is dead, any form of organ in your body that is failing, receive life now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Thank you for joining us today. We hope your Bethel experience was blessed. Join us next time here in the sanctuary. You can drive in, carpool, or reach out to our transportation team for assistance. Stay connected via our social media platforms and visit our website at www.rccgbethelassembly.org. See you next time.